Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to scientific notation. So first of all, what is scientific notation? Scientific notation is a way of expressing numbers that are really, really big or really, really close to zero to kind of make them a little bit more standard and readable. So what it looks like is we would say it's of the form a times 10 to the b, where a is a number between 1 and 10. And it could be 1, but it cannot be 10. So it's always just there's one digit in front of the decimal point that's not 0. And b is an integer. And so who uses scientific notation? Well, uh, maybe astronomers do when we're you know measuring distances from our galaxy to other galaxies, because that would be really, really big numbers. Or biologists, people who look at really little things, who look at atoms, really small things, if we're looking at the size of those, we might use scientific notation there too. If a number is between 0 and 1, so that's what I'm saying is a really small number, then the exponent is going to be negative. Because basically what this multiplying by 10 to the something is doing is it is moving the decimal point left or right, right? Multiplying by some power of 10 is moving the decimal point to the left if it's really, really small, and therefore the exponent is negative or if it's bigger than one and the exponent is positive, it'd be moving the decimal point to the right. So we can go from standard form into scientific notation and scientific notation into uh, standard form. And then very rarely would we ever see a number that we're writing in scientific notation and that number happens to be one, but it would be one times 10 to the zero, right? Because it would just be one times one, which would be one. Scientific notation is just multiplication, so it looks a little bit weird, but that's all it is. It's just multiplication. Let's look at some examples. We want to write each of these numbers in scientific notation. The first one is the distance to the sun. It's 93 million miles. So again, what we want to do is we want to think about how many times we're moving the decimal point. And then the number of times we move the decimal point, that's going to tell us what the power of 10 is. So we know it's going to be something times 10 to the something. Let's see what that something is. So we're going to move the decimal point. I'm going to move it once, twice, three times, four, five, six. So now the decimal point is here. Are we looking at a number yet that's between 1 and 10? Well, no, because right now the number is 93. So if I move the decimal point one more time, now I have the number 9.3, which is between 1 and 10. So I'm going to say it's 9.3. And now how many times did we move the decimal point? We moved it three, six, seven times. So we're going to say times 10 to the seventh. Now it's in scientific notation. So if we wanted to go back, this would just tell us move the decimal point seven times to the right. And that would just be going in reverse here. And we should end up at 93 million miles. So that's going from standard form into scientific notation. OK, how about the distance of one light year? So one light year is, ah, what is that? Billion, six billion miles? No, that's six trillion, holy cow. So one light year is six trillion miles. How would we express that number in scientific notation? Well, we know it's gonna be some number between one and 10 times 10 to the what? We just need to figure out what those two variables are. So let's count. We're gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. When I move it 12 times, look at that. Now I have just a six in front of the decimal. 6 is a number between 1 and 10, so it's going to be 6 times. And do you remember how many times we moved the decimal point? We moved it 12 times. So it would be 6 times 10 to the 12th. All right, how about letter C? The cost of Hurricane Sandy was $65 billion. Holy cow. How would we write this in scientific notation? Well, let's see. We're going to move it 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 65. There we go. So 6.5 times 10 to the, how many times did I move it? And I moved it three, six, nine, ten 10 times. 6.5 times 10 to the 10th. And our last example, we have this itty bitty number and it's the width of an influenza virus. So let's see. We need now to make the number bigger, right? This is some teeny tiny number. We need to get it to become a number between 1 and 10. So this time, whatever we, however many times we move the decimal point, we're actually going to say that it's negative because we're really having to divide by 10 a bunch of times to go from scientific notation back into standard form. So let's count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is 0 0.1. I move it around 
That's nine times. So I'm going to say one times 10 to the negative ninth. So again, what that negative nine is doing is it's taking the decimal point and moving it to the left. It's dividing by 10. So we have one times 10 to the negative ninth, or you can say 1.0, it doesn't matter. How about going the other direction? So now we're given the numbers in scientific notation. We want them in standard form. Here's a nice one. The probability of winning the New York lottery is 4.355878 times 10 to the negative eighth. That negative eight tells us to do what? It tells us to move the decimal point eight times to the left, or we're dividing by 10 eight times is what that means. So if we're gonna move it eight times to the left, we're gonna have to add a lot of zeros here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we would put gaps in those zeros. Uh, sorry, zeros in those gaps. I said that backwards, didn't I? So how many zeros are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros in between the decimal point and the start of the actual number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, three, five, five, eight, seven, eight. Should you play the lottery? Not if you think you're gonna win, because you're definitely not going to. Okay, how about Avatar's worldwide, worldwide gross income? We have 2.79 times 10 to the ninth. This is a positive exponent, so that tells us to move the decimal point which way to get it into standard form? We're gonna move it to the right. So we're gonna take 2.79, we're gonna move it nine places to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many zeros do we need to add here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna add seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can put our commas back in and we have $2,790,000,000. Yikes, that's a lot of money. Well done, Avatar, well done. And that's how we would do that. When it's in uh, standard form and it's a big number, you don't need to put a decimal point in, we can just forego the decimal point. How about the population of Manhattan in 2013? It's 1.626 times 10 to the sixth. That's telling us move the decimal point six places to the right, to the right. So when we move it six places to the right, that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like we're filling in three zeros into our gaps. So that's 1,626,000. That was the population of Manhattan in 2013. How about the population of the Dominican Republic? We have 1.04 times 10 to the seventh. So these numbers almost look the same. Does that mean that these values are almost the same? Well, no, because this is a whole, the Dominican's population is a whole 10 times greater, it's one magnitude of 10 times greater than the population of Manhattan. So when we look at this, we have 1.04, we're multiplying it by a positive exponent, so we're gonna move it seven places to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, I need five more zeros. And you might be able to find a shortcut here for how many zeros you need to add for these numbers. So. Before I get to that, it looks like the population of the Dominican Republic in 2013 was 10,400,000. So yeah, 10 times bigger than Manhattan, which is what I was expecting given that it was had one more 10, factor of 10. And so what I like to do with these to kind of determine the number of zeros is if we go back to Avatar's gross income, we have two places behind the decimal point and we're multiplying by positive nine. So it's gonna take two turns to get this around behind the, the very last number. And then I would just have to add, if I already used two and I need a total of nine, that means I need seven more things. So I would need seven more zeros. So I like to use that shortcut. Maybe it'll help you too. And the same thing would go for if we have a negative. Uh, it would, it's always, always with negatives, it's gonna take one to get around that first digit. So it'll always, you'll always need one fewer zeros here. And then there's always gonna be your leading zero there, which you don't have to actually include, but I like to include it. So just a shortcut, if it helps, great. If not, feel free to not use it too. These have been examples of looking at scientific notes. Yes, yeah, scientific notation. Thank you for stopping by.